Hey guys, uh, so uh, let's talk about just all theories of perception. Um, <clears throat> so Gestalt theories um, of perception uh, came about in the early turn of the century by three German psychologists, Max Wertheimer, Kurt Kafka, and Wolfgang Kohler. And it really became a movement around 1912 when Wertheimer investigated the Phi phenomenon. And um, you can kind of see here, uh, we've all seen a marquee. Um, and the lights appear to be moving. However, it's really not moving. It just is, uh, we perceive it to be moving, but it's really just a single light, a static light blinking in intervals. Um, so that really got uh, the movement going was that discovery. And Gestalt means form and shape. And the idea here is that uh, we don't see things as individual items, but that all the individual items are associated as one whole. So we'll care, we care about this because when we are dealing with visual communication, we are involved in crafting a perceptual structure for a message using these Gestalt principles of perception. And there's several, but uh, the first one is isomorphic correspondence. Um, and, you know, when we look at this jagged type of Metallica here, we see pointed serifs and um, it has this look of you know, danger or sharp um, or possibly pain. Um, an isomorphic correspondence, it's all about, um, you know, when we see things like that, it usually triggers a memory in some way um, or something from our own personal physical experience. Um, in this case, it might, you know, make you think of thorns on a bush and, um, We've all been pricked or we've all been cut by broken glass at some point in our lives or something like that. But we relate that sharpness and that pointed, jagged edge to something we've experienced with the same thing. Like with this advertisement uh, painting of by Norman Rockwell, um, you know, this might trigger feelings and memories of eating at home, a nice big meal, uh, whether it be a holiday or not, but just that warm feeling of being around family. So similarity is also a Gestalt principle. And there's several types of similarity. Um, it's based on the, the concept of, you know, we look at similar items. They're usually grouped together. Um, and uh, usually that carries us from one thing to another. We relate to things that are similar. So even though uh, shape is one of them, so we see all the circles um, together and we see the squares uh, together. Um, and with color, even though we've got circles and squares here, we still see uh, the four that are in red. We see them right away. Um, alignment, you know, we see the two rows that are sticking out to the left, or in some cases you might see the three rows sticking out to the right. Um, similar angles we associate with one another um, to be related. Size, uh, we usually notice the biggest items first. Value or range from light to dark. Um, depending, you know, if we're looking at text and we had a bold text somewhere that was a d lot darker, um, then we would see that first. And in some cases, we see a combination of these physical characteristics, whether it be from size or whether it be from color or a combination of both. So there's also a flip side to similarity. You know, we want to create a focal point or a uh, emphasis or bring out something, we can also make it dissimilar to the objects that are surrounding it. <clears throat> so in this case, with the shapes, we notice the square immediately because it's dissimilar to all the circles around it. Same with the color. Alignment. We can apply all of these physical characteristics to the flip side of similarity as well. So if we look at some layouts, this is a magazine spread. This is an opening spread of an article. So 
So we have the main display head over here and it's not bragging. Um, and we have the byline and photo credit and then the uh, deck head at the bottom. And, you know, we grab the similarity from the branches of the trees by putting that in the letters itself. Um, this allows us to immediately go right with our eyes after reading the title um, because that is related and it, it continues to help us know how the article continues. So we immediately know to flip the page um, and keep continuing to read. Here we see the similarities with the shape of the glasses um, that she's wearing and the colors. And notice the circle over here to the right um, is slightly transparent like the lens of her glasses. Um, we also have the orange pulled from the photograph um, where we've done the drop cap and then the little caption here in the circular shape with the opening image. Um, and they've also put in some of the colors from the image in the deck head and the byline here. So a lot of the similarities is the colors that are pulled from the image so we carry them over to those relatable items that we want to see first. So you can obviously see where the similarity is here with the curve of the trunk of the elephant and the sweet little face and then the curve of and the serif of the stem of the A here. Now the flip side of similarity we can relate to this advertisement for smart water. So we have a neutral color palette for the most part but then we bring out these bright blues which is the branded color of the smart water brand and you know we notice that immediately because it stands out against the neutral background so it's inverse of similarity here the type is put in a shape of a round shape like the cookies surrounding it so we've got that similarity in shape but that inverse, um, instead of using a rectangle, it leaves enough space around uh, the type to where we notice the type more easily. Same here with the globe. Uh, so we've adjusted, they've adjusted the type here to follow the similar shape to what they've got at the top. And all of these round shapes throughout the entire poster um, help us read from one thing to another. And then we have the inverse of similarity here and we have similarity as well. So we notice uh, Dory and Nemo here at the top because of their separation or different color. And we have similarity with the types of fish while creating an arrow that helps us look down uh, towards the bottom. Or I guess this is really Nemo. And here, inverse and similarity, we immediately notice the white dot and we carry it to the white text. Proximity is also a principle and it relates to things that are related are usually going to be close together. So we have a few types of proximity. So close proximity, things are going to be close together but not touching or anything. So we see these three squares. They're similar items and they're grouped together. Um, and then we see touch, proximity. So even though they're different colors, they're similar shapes and they're touching one another. And then overlap is where they're slightly going to overlap. Now, when you're looking at layout, um, when you have things almost touching or touching along the edge, that, you, that can create what we call visual tension, um, and it can be displeasing to the eye. So be careful with that. You either want to overlap it or separate it, usually. So if we look at some examples, this is a movie poster for A Christmas Story classic. 
And uh, we have the name of the film. We have the credits here at the bottom. Those are all related items, and they're in close proximity down here. We have kind of the tagline here at the top, um, and that those lines of type are all related, so they're together in close proximity. And of course, the imagery, the characters in the film are all kind of around in the same illustration here. If we look at the weather app, same thing, you know, items that are related. If we look at the 10-day forecast, those uh, days are going to be in one category uh, close together. Um, and then you're going to have the different um, information relating to the weather. Um, if it's related, it'll be similar together. So the 10-day forecast and then, of course, right now or hourly is all going to be re related and in one category in its own little section. Same with Netflix, you know, you've got your categories here, all the similar items go together. Um, you know, running apps, any type of thing you're looking at will, will have this design principle in place. And all of those things mentioned above help with continuation, which is another uh, Gestalt principle. It's how we guide the eye. We also call it um, visual movement. Um, so the eye will follow a line or curve until it's signaled to change direction. So we perceive those separate objects as related if they follow the same path. Um, and we can change that too. Like in this case, we see the orange dots kind of first, and then we look at the hand and then follow over to the little black dot to the right. Uh, so continuation is how we're guiding the eye on the page or in the layout. And we do that intentionally. How we position things on the page helps it with that. So if we look at this uh, editorial layout here, uh, we see the frying pans. We see the colors now pulled from the images uh, to help with this. And we see the red dot and the egg. And those colors kind of lead us to the sticking point uh, or vice versa. But we kind of zigzag our way to the drop cap of the C, which starts to read the lead in the article. Um, and then we continue down the page to the images that have color as well. So it's leading our eye vertically down the page to all the important parts that we should be reading first. Here, obviously, the rocks play an important role in how it's leading our eye. So we immediately kind of follow it from top to bottom. Um, and we kind of notice the heaven and earth, and then the figure, and then the text, and so on. Here we're following the diagonal wooden stick of the candy apple, and it leads us to all the goodies and types of apples. Um, this is another poster uh, designed by Paula Scher for the public theater in New York. Um, and here we have a lot of type going on that's in close proximity of what, you know, how it's related, but it's the figure, it's using the figure to kind of lead us from one section of type to the other. And when you have uh, action shots or things that are showing action in some way, um, diagonal placement um, helps enhance that sense of action in the illustration or in the layout. So if you look at the figure here, every angle of his limbs like his from his knee to his ankle even the slight bend in his knee and the other leg all of everything's on a slight diagonal with everything you see here um, and that helps with the continuation even with the type here we see the big Q it's the biggest thing in the, the spread here this is another opening spread to an article um, and then we follow the leg of the queue up, and it immediately leads us to the chair. It's kind of perfectly in line with the leg of the chair, and that it allows us to keep going. So in this uh, resume uh, example, we're looking kind of like at a digital draft of the parts of the structure here, kind of laid out in, bar in bars, different colored valued bars. So we kind of know... Where the word mark is, we kind of know where the main headers of each section are, the subheaders, um, and such. And so, but we can see that there's similarity, proximity, and continuation in place here. Uh, we see all the headers are dark, and they are related in the same part of the structure. We see the bullets 
So that represents the listed items. Uh, the medium um, are all the subheaders. So those are the same parts of the structure. So they are similar, like all the type treatment for those would be the same and consistent. And continuation and how we're reading the page we see the word mark because of its size. The diagonal lines kind of help us follow down the page until um, we see her contact. So here's the actual resume. And it reads the same. You know, we see these uh, principles in action. And it's not just one principle ever being applied. It's multiple principles. Here's another resume. And so here the word mark is the darkest thing. Um, we've got kind of four levels of value here. Um, we have main, um, we kind of follow the diagonal here, kind of go counterclockwise around the page. Um, even if you go clockwise around the page, you're still kind of seeing the same uh, parts of the structure first. Um, these main uh, section titles, then the subheaders, and then the body copy and the body of the resume. Closure is another Gestalt principle, and this is uh, somewhat of an optical illusion, really. Um, it's a, where we have familiar shapes that are incomplete. Our mind fills, out, fills in the gaps to perceptually complete the items. Um, so even though we don't see actual lines here for the arrow, because of the, the, the cutout um, of the other shapes where it's overlapping, we, we, our mind fills in that gap. Um, so we see a lot of closure in logos and, and display uh, pictorial images and graphics uh, for brand, uh, brands a good bit. Um, the World Wildlife Fund is a perfect example of closure. And then in these editorial illustrations, uh, we see the same thing. Um, we don't necessarily see, this is actually an old illustration, hand-painted, um, and <clears throat> we don't actually see the contour of her back, really. It's just the negative space. But we can figure out where her body ends and where the background begins. <clears throat> By looking at these two uh, bags, we don't really have to question who these characters are based on the color and based on um, just some of the shape of the eyes and the color of their bodies. Uh, so we don't really have to have the whole character there to understand that. Our mind fills in the gap. Same here with the Dalmatian. And we have the contrast of the lines versus the dots to help us with that. And Shrek here, we don't have to see his face uh, to know who this is. Figure ground relationships um, are similar to closure in some degree, but um, it's more of a based around the distinction between an object, an object and its surrounding um, and deciphering what exactly is positive space versus what is negative space. So as you can see here, you know, um, this might look like a vase, but some people might see that these are two silhouettes of two faces um, looking at each other. So figure ground relationships can be very dynamic um, and ambiguous at the same time. Um, a lot of times you'll see this principle being used in logos and branding as well, same as closure. Um, and it usually defines something related in some way to what the images are portraying. Um, so like in the music, uh, piano service, um, the W and the M look like piano keys. And the iron duck clothing, uh, making the duck look like a hanger for the clothing, uh, the zip. And here we have um, like an, an ink pen nib here at the, as the overall black shape. And then we see the little spoon within um, that shape. This Dirty Harry poster from Clint Eastwood's earlier earlier in his career. Um, they were showing a uh, 
I guess, a tribute movie um, in Square Park in San Francisco. It was in 2010, but the movie has been around much longer than that. Um, but here you can see Clint Eastwood's face as a graphic here as part of the negative space, but it's also forming the shape of the silhouette of the gun. This is a very clever use of figure ground relationships. So um, you can see the dog, looks like a bulldog. Um, and then if we look in the mouth of the bulldog, uh, we see the silhouette of a cat. And in the mouth of the cat, we see a silhouette of a mouse. And if we look in the concave part of the dog's stomach, we see the coffin. But is this positive space or is this negative space? M.C. Escher, he's a famous artist. You've probably recognized his work and seen his work. If you ever took geometry in high school, a lot of teachers teach about tessellations. He invented tessellations um, where objects kind of metamorphosize into other shapes. Um, and in this particular poster, which is pretty famous, he's got the geese as positive space and then they slowly transform into that positive space slowly transforms into negative space and what was the white area is actually fish um, so he started out studying geometric mosaics in Spain when he lived there many years ago and from there he started playing around with organic objects and shapes and this is how it led to his invention of tessellations the figure ground is he's a master of figure ground relationships. Uh, these everyday objects here, um, like this little hand purse uh, or wallet, you know, it was part of an advertising campaign, I think, for insurance. Um, there was a whole commercial campaign about, and each of them had everyday objects that also um, had a dual purpose of being a face. But we'll see a lot of these elements um, or principles together in layouts, you know, with similarity, proximity, continuation, closure, figure ground relationships, isomorphic correspondence. We see these things um, all um, multiple times within a layout. Same with our website um, here at the university. So we have <clears throat> the similar items together like research and libraries, um, and the different subheaders, we have all the secondary navigation or primary navigation together, uh, all the secondary navigation together, we have like a third navigation here at the top. <clears throat> and then if we click on academics, we get to the same type of information. Um, and the blue color leads us to um, certain items that we can click on, and the red stands out to lead us to other things. If we click on the Lyceum, we would get back to the home page, no matter where we are in the layout. You know, here the similarity is the glasses. Proximity is all the information is together in its own little area. Um, continuation, oops, is uh, using the glasses to lead us down through the page vertically from the headline down to the other information. Um, closure is we are you know seeing some of the uh, you know where this might be. Um, we see the table but we don't see we know exactly where this would be just looking at what we have in the picture. And figure ground relationships, uh, just where these items are so close together. Um, and is this the positive space or is this the negative space to all of the type on the page? Here you can easily see the closure for sure and the continuation. Similar uh, similarity, we're bringing the red color over here to be a part of the main title. The blue is used for the other part of the main title in the deck. Um, so, 
we see all these uh, different elements within these different illustrations. So these uh, are things that designers use on a regular basis to help with the strengths of their designs and how we naturally perceive messages as human beings.